Chinese audio gear is relentlessly released week after week. Whether it's IEMs or DACs or amps or headphones or DAPs or cables, you can probably keep time by some brand's release cycles. A recent Chinese brand called Harmonic Dine released a few headphones. The first was the Helios, which retails for about $180. The second is the Zeus, which costs $350. The Zeus got a lot of favorable treatment when it was released. As with all audio gear, there is no consensus about the Zeus's overall performance. Is it god-tier, earth-shatteringly amazing as some would have you believe, or is it unimpressive as others have suggested? I was contemplating buying the Zeus, but was not quite prepared to plank down $350 for a headphone by a brand that is practically an unknown entity. Heck, I've spent money on known Chinese brands, Hi-Fi Man and Blonde, and regretted it later. Harmonic Dine seems not to have a website or any presence other than on Linsoul and Hi-Fi Go, so this headphone was not making a convincing argument from the get-go. Dave at the Honest Audiophile channel offered to let me borrow his Zeus for review. I'm grateful to Dave for giving me a chance to look at his headphone. I have provided a link to Dave's website in the description section below. Dave has left YouTube reviews, which I think is unfortunate, but if you still follow Dave, he says he will continue to post reviews on his website. Now, let's talk about the Zeus. Is this the god-tier headphone we were led to believe, or just another overpriced Chi-Fi product? I went to Linsoul's website to get information about the Zeus. I could not find Harmonic Dine's website, so Linsoul will have to be our source of information. Linsoul says that the Zeus was made with the highest quality materials. They claim that this headphone provides all the details of any song you listen to. Linsoul says that the Zeus has a sound that is, quote, both accurate and musical. The bass is supposedly very precise yet deep enough to leave a satisfying rumble. The vocals are allegedly smooth, and the treble is detailed and it shimmers. The Zeus supposedly has innovative and ergonomically designed ear pads. These ear pads are designed to provide a perfect seal for tight bass lines. I'm getting some contradictory information here. On the one hand, the Zeus is accurate, but on the other hand, it is musical. I don't know about you, but my impression of accurate does not necessarily mean that the sound is also musical. Linsoul's description does not clarify whether the Zeus is supposed to have a neutral or some other sound signature. The Zeus has a healthy amount of aluminum, plastic, and wood. The headband structure is metal, but the headband padding is attached to a very large plastic casing that is itself placed onto the metal structure. The yokes are metal and are attached to ear cups that are made of wood and metal. The driver housing is solid wood, but the ear cup backing is a piece of aluminum that has been intricately cut. The pattern on this metal portion of the ear cups is interesting. Some people commented that the pattern results in sharp edges. I don't think that's necessarily true. Indeed, my specific headphones did not have any sharp edges. The headphone has what appears to be wood accents. I could not tell if these accents are veneer or actual wood pieces that are glued on. The ear cups swivel easily, and maybe too easily. There's no friction whatsoever, so the ear cups will flop around when picked up from a desk. The ear cups also flip vertically. This means that you may end up having to readjust the ear cups if you toss them into a backpack. The headband adjustment system is a bit loose as well. The headband extends far too easily. The slightest amount of pressure will slide the headband downwards. The ear pads are made of what Harmonic Dine calls Nano Velvet. This marketing blurb is basically meaningless. The bottom line is that the ear cups are velvet material. The padding does not seem to be memory foam. In fact, the ear pads are pretty springy and remind me of typical sponge material. The headband padding is soft, but not memory foam. It appears to be relatively thin as well. I do not think there is an easy way to replace the headband padding. I think you would have to dismantle the headband structure to do that. The Zeus has a dual entry 3.5mm connection. The headphone comes with a single 4.4mm balance cable. The cable looks nice enough and is quite functional. Harmonic Dine also includes a 4.4mm to 3.5mm adapter so you can use these headphones with any single-ended source. The cable itself is built well. There is some sort of cloth covering most of the cable, terminating with connectors housed in robust metal. There are some weird things about the cable, however. There seems to be electrical tape that's clearly visible below the 4.4mm jack. Also, the Y splitter on the cable seems to be covered with really cheap plastic. The Zeus comes with a large briefcase. This case is heavily padded and totally unnecessary. Harmonic 9 does not provide replacement earpads or a carrying pouch inside this case. 
As for comfort, the Zeus is a bit weighty. It is lighter than the Avatar Planar, but heavier than the HD6XX, LCD-1, and the Hi-Fi Matsundara. Despite the lack of memory foam, I thought that the headphone was fairly comfortable. I wore the Zeus for 3-4 hours at a time and never felt pain or discomfort. The ear pads did start to make my ears feel warm after about an hour, but that's not unusual. Linsoul's website says that the ear pads are especially designed for a full seal. I poked and prodded the ear pads to figure out if there was a gap when the headphones were on my head. Surprisingly, the ear pads do indeed create a nearly full seal. The neck area just below my ear seemed to have a slight gap, but it was hard to be sure. Overall, the build is agreeable. There are some issues, but nothing of significant concern. For example, the easily swiveling ear cups might be a bit frustrating to deal with if you toss your headphones into a backpack. The headband adjusts a bit too easily for my taste, and I would prefer a bit more resistance there. The ear pads are perfectly functional. However, I think it's strange that Linsoul's first photo of this headphone shows it with leather-like ear pads, but the description on the website and the ear pads that we actually get are velvet. As for comfort, I think the Zeus is about average in this regard. It does not have significant clamping force, but just enough to keep the headphone sealed to my ears. The cable seems perfectly usable, but the aesthetics are a bit hit and miss. The electrical tape and cheap plastic covers are a bit unsightly. The briefcase, I think, is overkill. Clearly, there's no need for it. The case itself is not particularly nice or luxurious. It feels a bit cheap, to be perfectly honest. There is nothing about this case that comes close to the quality you get from an actual Pelican case. Other than these quirks, the Zeus comes with agreeable, though not stunning, accessories. It is built reasonably well, though some issues do remain. It is decently comfortable. I tested the Zeus with numerous devices. I listened with the Eco Zerta, the RME ADI2 DAC, the Matrix Mini i Pro 3, and my Lotu Paw S1. I played music through Amazon Music HD. I used the stock cable and ear pads. I should emphasize that the Zeus is pretty easy to drive. The Eco Zerta, for example, got the headphones quite loud and to peak performance without any difficulty. Evidently, the Zeus is supposed to have a deep bass response. However, I think it has a slight sub bass roll off and there is some audible distortion. In Mountains by Hans Zimmer, the Zeus presented the sub bass rumble at the very beginning of the track. However, it seemed a bit recessed, less obvious than what I've heard on neutral headphones such as the Allo S4X. The transients was slightly faster than what I heard on the S4X as well. Adding more power to the Zeus did not make the sub bass more pronounced. When the crescendo hit at the middle of the track, the organ cut through the mix. The rolling thunder effect was easily audible, but did not shake the ear cups. There was average at best separation of instruments. All instruments tended to meld together somewhat. When the vocals started near the end of the song, they rose from the background until they were about shoulder to shoulder with the instruments. I used two tracks from the Sicario soundtrack to determine whether there is any sub-bass distortion in headphones or IEMs. These tracks are The Beast and The Border. I played both on the Zeus. I heard a fairly strange result. On the Eco Zerta, the sub-bass rumble was slightly recessed or rolled off but still audible and clear. However, when I replayed these tracks on the Mini i Pro 3 and the RME, the roll-off was still present and I heard some distortion. This distortion was audible between 2 minutes and 2 minutes and 30 seconds in The Border, and between 50 seconds and 1 minute and 15 seconds in The Beast. At lower volumes, this distortion was either not present or really less obvious. I next listened to Conquer by Overwork. This track has a rolling marble effect at the beginning, and this is supposed to pan from right to left to center. The Zeus did recreate the sound of the rolling marbles perfectly, but the panning did not occur. In fact, the Zeus kept that sound dead center. The track has several drums, and the Zeus presented all of them with hard impact. I could easily hear the thwacking of drumsticks hitting the drum head. It appeared that mid-bass was a little elevated, and the drums appeared to be slightly accentuated. I listened to several hip-hop songs including Pure Water, New Patek, Reel It In, and Uproar. On each track, the Zeus presented the subwoofer effect clearly, but it was recessed. It always sounded like the subwoofer was at the other end of a very large room. Mid-bass was more obvious, and the drums were clearly louder than what I could hear on the more neutral S4X. Vocals were easily one step ahead of the instruments and had most of their sparkle. The sparkle seemed to be a bit rolled off, so the vocals did not appear to be as bright or as sharp as they appeared on the S4X. Overall, sub-bass seems to be slightly recessed or rolled off. Mid-bass has a marginal emphasis. This is not a V-shaped bass response, but a slightly colored one. 
The separation of sub-bass and mid-bass is about average. There is some melding between these two frequency ranges, but I could not hear any muddiness. There is some distortion to tracks that rely on sub-bass heavily. Oddly, this distortion seemed to audibly occur when the Zeus was provided more power and listened to at just below maximum safe listening levels. I was able to source a second Zeus, which I will talk about later. I compared the two headphones for distortion. I found the second pair had a very similar issue of audible sub-bass distortion on very bassy tracks played at high volumes. According to the marketing material, the Zeus is supposed to have smooth vocals. I would say that is fairly accurate. Moreover, the mids frequency appears to be close to neutral. In Orla Gartland's song Why Am I Like This, vocal grain and sibilance is naturally recorded into the track. On some headphones, these details jump out and can be elevated or even harsh. Other headphones add a veneer of smoothness and reduce the sibilance. The Zeus has a unique middleman approach. The sibilance is a touch above neutral, but the vocal grain is smooth and less obvious than on neutral headphones like the Aventone Planar or the Allo S4X. The timbre of the guitar and drums seemed correct. The backup vocalist who appears at the end of the song was clear and separate. That backup voice was in the right ear cup and seemed to be about one step behind the primary vocalist. I next listen to my most dreaded track, Dreamer by Charlie XCX. This song has a lot of electronic elements and the primary vocalist is rather harsh to my ears on the vast majority of headphones. The Zeus, however, actually made the vocals sound smooth and, I am a bit shocked to admit this, easy to listen to. Dreamer is one of those special tracks that is my standard when I want to determine if a headphone really has so-called smooth vocals. The Zeus did its job admirably. In fact, I would put the Zeus's ability to smooth out the vocals in this track similar to what the SRH 1540 does. I listened to Want You Back by Haim. The Zeus seemed to slightly accentuate the primary vocalist's sibilance, but it was not more than a few decibels and nowhere close to being harsh. At 8 seconds into the track, the singer says the word we and drags the word out, making it sound gravelly. The Zeus did recreate this detail, but it was smoother and a bit more veiled than on neutral headphones. The two backup vocalists were easily audible when they first started singing. One was in the right and the other in the left ear cup. However, their voices did start melding marginally when the instruments played at maximum. I could still hear the separate tonalities of all three vocals when that happened. The guitars, drums, pianos, bass all appeared to have accurate timbre. However, the drums were a bit louder than the other instruments. In Superposition by Young the Giant, the Zeus recreated the ukulele, drums, and bass with true timbre. The drums were clearly a bit louder than the ukulele and the bass was recessed, though still audible. The primary male vocalist sounded very smooth. He's supposed to have a bit of sibilance, but the Zeus rolled that detail off marginally. There is a backup vocalist in this track layered beneath the primary vocalist's voice. The vast majority of headphones cannot present the two voices separately. The Zeus, however, did allow me to hear that little difference in tonality. This detail was not abundantly clear, and since I know from experience what to listen for, I heard it. But still, the Zeus did what a lot of headphones cannot. Between 1 minute and 10 seconds and 1 minute and 20 seconds in the song, there are supposed to be sharp intakes of breaths. The Zeus rendered this detail more like shallow gasps than sharp breaths. Overall, the marketing that the Zeus has smooth vocals appears to be accurate. Female sibilance seems to be ever so slightly pushed forward, but nothing remotely close to harsh or piercing. Male vocals tend to have sibilance rolled off just a little. All instruments sounded like they should. I could not hear any distortion or odd tonalities to drums, pianos, guitars, flutes, or any other mid-centric instrument. The Zeus's marketing says that the treble shimmers like crystals and is detailed. I'm not sure what crystals sound like, but I imagine what these guys mean is that the Zeus has clear treble. Anyway, it appears to me that the Zeus has a roll-off to some treble instruments. In Skirtso for X-Wings, the Zeus presented the brass and horns with accurate timbre, However, after repeated listening, it sounded like the horns were a bit rolled off while the brass was close to neutral. The nasally sound signature of these instruments was mostly present, but I thought it was not quite as accurate as on more neutral headphones like the Allo S4X or the Aventone Planar. In other words, some of the nasally presentation was smoothed out. I could not hear individual instruments, but group sets were clear and separate from each other. The Zeus presented a little bit of verticality and depth, but nothing like what you would hear on the HD 800S, Focal Clear, or even the Austrian Audio Hi X55. In Flight from the City by Johan Johansson, the Zeus presented the piano as if it was about 5 feet away. 
The bassier notes were a little recessed, which resulted in a bit more clarity to the piano. I could hear the pops and sizzles that are details embedded into the bottom layer of this track. I could hear the creaking of wood on the pianist's bench and the shifting of the cello. The cello sounded smooth and appeared to have accurate tonality. It and the piano did meld slightly. In take five of the Dave Brubeck Quartet, the Zeus presented the piano in the right, the drums in the left, the saxophone center, and the bass in the background, but a little recessed. All instruments were clear with marginal melding among them. I could hear the different sounds of the cymbals as they were hit in different positions. The saxophone was clear and smooth. Some of the gravelly nature of the instruments was missing, causing a more relaxed, less fatiguing experience, especially at higher volumes. Overall, the treble response is dependent upon the particular instrument. Some treble instruments are close to neutral, while others are a bit rolled off. Regardless, the treble is clear and smooth, easy to listen to. The marketing says that the Zeus will provide all the details in a song. That is obviously hyperbole. I do not think it is true. However, the Zeus does provide above average detail. This headphone tends to be fairly clear across the whole frequency range. Because sub bass is a little rolled off and there is only a slight emphasis to mid bass, mid centric and treble detail is rather easy to hear. Multiple vocalists, breathing, plucking of guitar strings, creaking of wood, shifting of cellos, pops and sizzles, these are all easily audible. On the other hand, some vocal grain and nasally signatures of brass and horns is smoothed out. Sharp intakes of breath sound more like shallow gasps. The bottom line is that the Zeus does not have a veiled presentation. I never thought details were fundamentally missing. The smoothing effect that the Zeus adds does take a bit away from the accuracy of some instruments and vocals, but I can still hear those details in the mix. It's simply that those details are not as easily audible as on headphones with less coloration. For a more quantitative test, I use the song New Light by Kazuki. This track has layers of details, including the sound of children, wind, rustling of grass, synth, piano, and footsteps. I count the number of footsteps I can hear in the first 60 seconds. The Sennheiser HD 800S presents 22 footsteps. The Focal Clear presents 18 footsteps. The Austrian Audio High X55 presents 16 footsteps. The Sivka Phoenix provides 9 to 10 footsteps. The Odyssey LCD-1, Sennheiser HD 6XX, and 660S each provide 7 to about 8 footsteps. The Neumann NDH-20 provides 6 footsteps. And the Zeus provides 9 to 10 footsteps. Some of the footsteps were clear, particularly the ones in the first 15 seconds, while others were a bit more difficult to differentiate. This was fairly consistent with my experience using the Zeus with my other test tracks. Clearly, the Zeus is not the master of detail retrieval. I would be happy to say that the Zeus provides above average detail, but this is nothing like the X55, Focal Clear, or HD 800S. The Zeus appears to have above average soundstage. In my spectrum, the LCD-1, Sennheiser HD6XX, and 660S have average soundstage. This is where I typically start the comparison. This is the standard because a lot of people have the 6XX and might be able to relate to it. The Neumann NDH20 has below average soundstage. The Odyssey Mobius and every Beats headphone I've endured have claustrophobic soundstage. On the other side, the Hi-Fi Mansandara, Aventone Planar, Austrian Audio Hi X55, and Shure SRH 1540 have above average soundstage. The Sivka Phoenix has average to above average soundstage. The Hi-Fi Mandiva has about wide soundstage. The HD 800S has super wide soundstage. I would put the Zeus in the same category as the Sundara and the Aventone Planar, though the Sundara might still be a little bit wider than the Zeus. Frankly, I think this is respectable company to be in. However, the Zeus does not have 3D imaging. In other words, instrument placement is nothing exceptional. Although the Zeus does have some depth and verticality, this presentation is nowhere close to what you would hear on the HD 800S or even the X55, two headphones that provide an analytical dissection of your music. Harmonic Dine is not very descriptive of the sound signature of the Zeus. I really don't know what they were aiming for. Was it balanced, neutral, detailed, or analytical? I was somewhat surprised to find that the promises were conservatively vague. In other words, other than the hyperbole that the Zeus will render all the details in a song, the Zeus is marketed as a headphone that should sound pleasing. 
No grandiose comments that the Zeus is perfect for mixing and mastering, or that it provides music as it was originally recorded, or any such schlock. The Zeus has a slight sub-bass roll-off. It is not anemic, at least not in my view, but bass heads will not like the bass response here. Mid-bass is slightly elevated and energetic. You will not hear the visceral drum attacks that you might hear on the one more triple driver, the ZMF Atticus, or the Odyssey LCD XC. Instead, the Zeus takes a slight departure from neutral tuning and adds a bit of mid-bass bump. This, I think, results in a bass response that is not bloated. There's a certain coloration, but not what I would call extreme. The mids are generally smooth. Even harsh vocals get a gentle touch. Sibilance is ever so slightly accentuated, but vocal grain is recessed or smoothed out. Mid-centric instruments always sounded accurate. Drums were typically louder in the mix, but you would expect that considering the mid-bass bump. Vocals do seem a bit recessed in the mix, but not by very much. They are always clear and distinct, and not forced into your ears. Treble is gentle on the Zeus. That's not to say that the Zeus has no treble. Rather, I think that the treble was tuned to be unfatiguing while still providing clarity. Some treble-centric instruments do tend to have less than full energy, but not always. Separation of treble instruments is good, and you can pick out group sets in an orchestral track without any difficulty. The Zeus has above-average detail. This is nothing like what we were promised in the marketing, but the performance is nothing to scoff at either. For example, the Zeus is generally clear throughout the frequency range. The details are not hidden, though some things, such as sharp intakes of breaths and nasally signatures of horns and vocal grain, are recessed to a degree. My tests indicate that the Zeus does provide more obvious detail than the HG6XX, LCD-1, or the NDH-20. Soundstage is comparable to that of the Sundara, though not exactly the same. It is safe to say that the Zeus has above-average soundstage and sits in good company along with the Sundara, Aventone Planar, and the Hi-X55. My overall impression is that the Zeus is a balanced sounding headphone. There is definitely coloration to the sound signature. Your music will be altered on this headphone. But altered how? Well, I think you should expect a bit of mid-bass emphasis and smooth rendition of vocals. Treble will not be harsh and typically will be easy to listen to even at higher volumes. One caveat I need to point out is the weird sub-bass distortion I heard in the Sicario soundtrack at high volume. This is not something I run into regularly and I could not replicate it on any of the other headphones I compared to in this review. So maybe this was an issue with the units I have for review, or maybe this is par for the course. Regardless, just keep in mind that when I test headphones, I put the drivers through some strain. If I can hear distortion, I want to know when and why that happens. I figure some people might be interested in that information. On the Zeus, I think that distortion displays itself in a fairly unique and limited capacity. I never heard it at casual listening levels, for example. I asked on my channel which three headphones people wanted me to compare to the Zeus. I said I would compare the top three requests. The top three most requested headphones are the Sundara, HD6XX, and Sivka Phoenix. I will therefore compare the Zeus to these headphones. Please consider that I have already reviewed all the three competitor headphones here. This section will not be a thorough examination of their sound and performance. Instead, I am merely providing a general comparison. I'll try to give you as much information as I can about similarities or differences without taking up too much time. For these comparisons, I used the RME ADI-2 DAC. I plugged its single-ended output into a passive AB switch. I connected one competitor headphone at a time when comparing to the Zeus. I volume matched as best as I could. I used the stock ear pads and cables. The Sundara seems to have a greater sub-bass roll-off than the Zeus. In Mountains by Hans Zimmer, for example, the Zeus made the sub-bass louder and provided longer decay. The distortion I spoke of regarding the Zeus was not present on the Sundara when I tried to replicate that issue. Mid-bass impact was more neutral on the Sundara. The Zeus, by comparison, made drums louder than other instruments. Mids on the Sundara are closer to neutral but also more sibilant than the Zeus. The Sundara emphasized both the vocal grain and sibilance, whereas the Zeus smoothed out the grain and only marginally accentuated the sibilance. On the Zeus, bass tended to bleed into the mids more than they did on the Sundara, which resulted in vocals sounding a bit more full on the Zeus. In comparison, the Sundara gave the impression of thinner or more distant vocals. The Sundara has more neutral treble. Indeed, the Zeus clearly rolled off some treble energy when compared. 
Moreover, the Sundara provided the nasally, gravelly sound of brass and horns quite obviously, while the Zeus rendered that detail less audibly, smoothing it out. The difference in trouble neutrality is not necessarily night and day, but it is audible in an A-B test. Let us turn to the HD6XX. Interestingly, the two headphones appear to have a very similar sub-bass presentation. Both are a little rolled off. I had a hard time finding differences when listening to Mountains and the Sicario soundtrack. The distortion I heard on the Zeus with the Sicario soundtrack could not be replicated on the 6XX. Mid-bass impact is different. In fact, I think the Zeus has a bit more mid-bass emphasis. It's not a huge departure, but it is noticeable. I would hazard that the 6XX is closer to neutral for mid-bass. The Zeus provided slightly sharper thwacking sounds as drumsticks hit the drum heads. The mids response is also not too dissimilar between the Zeus and 6XX. However, there are a few takeaways. First, the 6XX does render more vocal grain than the Zeus. The Zeus smooths out this detail. Second, the Zeus has a bit more sibilance than the 6XX. Third, the Zeus provides more clarity in the mids. The Zeus has clearer separation of instruments and vocals. In fact, the 6XX sounds warmer, more intimate than the Zeus when speaking about mids performance. I also think that the bass bleeds into the mids a bit more on the 6XX. As for treble, again, these two headphones share similarities. Neither headphone provides an overabundance of treble energy. Switching back and forth, I believe the Zeus is clearer overall in the treble region. The 6XX, by contrast, tends to roll off treble a little bit more, with slightly less energy than the Zeus. Neither headphone is fatiguing at high volumes, but the 6XX does tend to provide more relaxed treble, at least in my experience. Of course, this could be due to ear pad wear on the 6XX. Finally, let us discuss the Sifka Phoenix. The Phoenix appears to have more sub-bass presence than the Zeus. Going back and forth, it was apparent that the Phoenix had slightly longer decay to sub-bass and that frequency was more obvious than on the Zeus. If I were to guess, I would say that the difference here is of several decibels. There is more mid-bass and sub-bass clarity to the Zeus, however. When I listened to the Sicario soundtrack, the Phoenix did not distort. I believe this Phoenix has an accentuated mid-bass, slightly more than the Zeus. However, that mid-bass is not as clear as on the Zeus, and the Zeus provides a sharper thwacking sound to drumsticks hitting drum heads. In contrast, the Phoenix makes that sound a bit blunted, less energetic, but not by a huge margin. The mids on the Phoenix are more forward than on the Zeus. This is particularly noticeable when I compared vocals. Vocals on the Phoenix stand out more than they do on the Zeus. In fact, the Phoenix tends to accentuate siblings more than the Zeus. The Phoenix renders the vocal grain, though with a bit more emphasis than is neutral, whereas the Zeus tends to smooth out vocal grain. Instruments appeared to have the same timbre on both headphones. However, decay of instruments was longer on the Phoenix, and drums were clearly louder in the mix than what I heard on the Zeus. The trouble on the Phoenix is a bit closer to neutral than what I heard on the Zeus. As I mentioned previously, the Zeus tends to roll off some trouble energy and smooths out some of the nasally character of instruments. The Phoenix has a bit more energy to treble. It is likely a bit north of neutral, but not harsh. The nasally signatures of brass and horn stands out more on the Phoenix. However, the Zeus provides clearer treble overall. In other words, treble-centric instruments have greater separation in a mix when listening on the Zeus. Keep in mind that volume matching is a significant factor when comparing headphones. If one headphone is louder than another, then the compression can be skewed. I tried to volume match as best as I could, but I doubt I was able to do it perfectly. So take the comparisons I spoke of with some circumspection. What is the overall message? Of the three headphones I compared, the HD6XX probably comes closest to the Zeus's sound signature. Both headphones have warmer presentation, both cater to the mids, particularly vocals, and both have a gentler approach to treble. The Sundara was the most different from the Zeus. The Sundara has an airier presentation, which is quite noticeable when listening to vocals. The Sundara has more neutral bass, as well as greater sub-bass roll-off than the Zeus. The treble is also closer to neutral on the Sundara. The Phoenix sits somewhere in the middle. Its performance was not as different from the Zeus as the Sundara's performance was, but neither was the Phoenix as close a match to the general sound as the 6XX was close to the Zeus. All four headphones sound different. In some respects, those differences are not dramatic, while others are pretty obvious. Keep in mind that the music you listen to plays a big role in this experience. None of the headphones is necessarily better than the other. They're all just different. Whether one of these appeals to you is something you're just going to have to figure out yourself. 
When it comes to chi-fi stuff, it's always a gamble. Sometimes you get lucky, and sometimes you get something like the Blonde BL30. Chi-fi stuff isn't necessarily bad. It's just, you know, always in our faces. I mean, there's a new headphone, DAC, amp, or IEM released every single month. Having the might of the Chinese manufacturing sector probably helps shove out products at a breakneck speed. You couldn't do that in the West. When we look at the Zeus, we have to think long and hard about what it offers. Why should anyone buy this month's Chinese headphone? Does it sound different from other headphones I compared? Certainly. When tested against some very popular headphones, it was evident that the Zeus is not like them. The Sundara's sound signature is quite different from that of the Zeus. The HD6XX sounds similar to the Zeus, but there are notable differences in performance, particularly clarity and soundstage. The Sivka Phoenix is an open back headphone that has bass similar to what you might hear on a close back without the limited soundstage of a typical close back headphone. But the Phoenix has a sound signature that is easily distinguishable from the Zeus. I know people are curious about whether the Zeus is worth buying if they already have the HD6XX or whether they should buy the 6XX or the Zeus. Well, I can't answer that question for you. Clearly the two headphones are similar but they are not the same. As with anything in life, until you try it yourself, you can't be sure if you will actually like it. With fewer and fewer audio stores, we're all stuck guessing and hoping what we order online will be to our favor. What I can say about the Zeus is that there is nothing technically wrong with it. Except for the sub-bass distortion I heard under a very specific condition, the Zeus is a competent headphone. But it's not amazing in anything. Yes, the Zeus has a wider sound stage than the HD6XX or LCD-1, but it's in the same ballpark as the Sundara. Yes, the Zeus provides above average detail and clarity, but again, it is in the same ballpark as the Sundara, Aventone Planar, and some other headphones. Yes, the Zeus does provide sub-bass, but it is a bit rolled off, similar to the HD6XX. So when you start looking at the big picture, you will see that the Zeus is not the god of headphones. It's merely a different flavor of this month's candy. This brings us to value. $350 is a lot of money for many people. It would be hubris to think that it's easy to throw down that type of cash. There are plenty of people who are skimping and saving to buy the $200 HD6XX or a new DAC or an amp. So we really need to be careful when we are recommending gear that costs hundreds of dollars. What does the Zeus do so fundamentally different from other headphones to justify the $350 price tag? Well, the soundstage is above average, but nothing amazing. You can find similar soundstage on other products. The clarity is above average, and again, you can find similar performance elsewhere. The sound signature is balanced, and there are plenty of balanced sounding headphones on the market, so the fact that this headphone has balanced tuning is not shocking. The Zeus has fairly good build. I'm sure there are people who will be very disappointed by the wood accents and the overall design, but the headphone does not feel flimsy. Then there's the accessories. I think the cable is fine, but I was quite disappointed with the overall construction. The evident electrical tape and plastic covering is quite unseemly. This shouts cheap, not luxury. I appreciate that Harmonic Dime provided a balanced cable. However, it would have been nice for them to include a 4.4mm to quarter inch adapter. If you want to plug this headphone into a single-ended quarter inch output right now, you'll need to attach the 3.5mm adapter, then attach a 3.5mm to quarter inch adapter, and frankly that just gets pretty silly. The case is rather unnecessary. I don't understand why Harmonic Dine even bothered. I have serious doubts that it is waterproof, but why even have it? A hard shell case would have been more than rational, and that might have also reduced the price a bit. Then there is the lack of additional ear pads. Yes, I know, you can buy alternative ear pads, but if Chi Fi really wants to make a case that it is value or luxury, then it should include stuff that makes a real impact. A spare set of ear pads would have been a big step in the right direction. Unfortunately, we don't get that. When I look at the total package, I see a headphone that is competently built, though with some caveats. It does not excel in any particular category, but it also does not fall flat on its face. A god the Zeus is not. It's another chi fi product that is pretending to be luxury at a value. I don't think that the accessories, build, and overall performance is anything worth godlike admiration. But here's the thing I was quite interested in buying the Zeus. 
I researched and found overwhelmingly positive reviews. Then I stumbled across the Honest Audiophiles review and I got a different impression. And I think that settled it for me. I wasn't going to spend money on the Zeus. When Dave the Honest Audiophile loaned me his headphones to review, I was grateful. Here, I would have a chance to listen to and review a pair of headphones that I did not need to buy. And I've done that. I don't think the Zeus's performance excels. It's a perfectly agreeable product. I'm sure to some people it will be a great headphone, but to others it will be nothing exceptional. This all depends on people's prior experience, sound preferences, and the music they listen to. Which brings me back to the Zeus. I determine value based upon one of two factors. If the gear was sent to me, I ask myself if I would buy it. If I bought the gear, I ask if I would keep it. I thought about this question for a week, and I made a decision. I bought the Zeus. I still question its $350 price. I want to explain why that's the case and why I decided to spend the money on it anyway. At $350, I think people should get a bit more. A better cable, an additional set of ear pads, an actual warranty, and some assurance that the product will receive support in the future. You see, when you buy from Sennheiser, Bear Dynamics, Sony, Odyssey, Sipka, Hi-Fi Man, or Monolith, you're buying from established brands. There is some assurance that you will get product support. But who the heck is Harmonic Dine and how long until they shut their doors? As with other gear sold on Linsoul, you can't directly contact Harmonic Dine for product support. You have to go through Linsoul. And if Linsoul one day decides they don't want the help, you're out of luck. This, above all else, is a huge factor. The uncertainty. Assuming you think the Zeus's sound signature would appeal to you, I would suggest you consider if you're willing to accept the gamble that is Chai Fi product support. If you want a warm sound signature, then why not buy the cheaper HD6XX? No, it's not exactly the same sound signature and performance as the Zeus, but you're buying from an established brand. I did not compare the Maisie 99 Classic in this review, but that is also another option for warm, balanced sounding headphones. The 99 Classics has very good build, comes from an established brand, and is also cheaper than the Zeus. The point is that the Zeus is not alone in the warm and balanced sounding headphone category. There are other options you can consider if that's the general sound signature you want. If you're not particularly convinced about the Zeus's sound signature, if you think that it may not be to your liking, then you have plenty of alternatives. The Sundara is one, the Phoenix is another, or you could go a totally different route and take a look at the Bass Audio G12, or the Monolith M1060C, or the Foss XT60RP. So no, I'm not convinced that the Zeus is value at $350. There's so much good competition, all with different sound and performance I admit, that you may find a headphone which is more pleasing to you than the Zeus. But I bought the Zeus anyway. Why? I was fortunate enough to compare the Zeus to other headphones. I can hear what it does for my music and my preferences. I appreciate this headphone's above average performance. But far more importantly, for some of my music, I quite enjoy the smooth vocals and gentle treble. I try to be eclectic in my gear. I do not want to EQ or hunt for the same sound signature over and over again. If a product can help me experience my music differently, then I'm interested. This is the reason why I bought the Zeus. My personal desire to have a smoother, gentler, yet still clear sound signature compared to other headphones in my arsenal. But I also collect gear, and part of the calculus was to own a headphone that one day, very likely, will not be supported and will disappear. I know. This sounds counterintuitive to common sense. That is because it is counterintuitive to common sense. I mean, why do people buy old iPods and modify them? Why do people spend hundreds or thousands of dollars on DAPs when they could just buy a used LG V30 and a portable amp for a fraction of the cost of some Fio and Astroin Kern, Ibasso, Cowan, and Hi-Fi Man DAPs? Why do people hoard tubes for their OTL amps? Why do people spend money on earpads in order to experiment with sound alterations? Why do people throw money at audio gear on Indiegogo with only a wing and a prayer that they will ever get a product? And honestly, why does seemingly everyone want to know if the newest product on the market, being hyped in the usual corners, is the next best thing? Whether it's food related, cars, pens, papers, colored pencils, clothes, perfumes, bikes, or anything else you can think of, people from all walks of life with all sorts of hobbies and interests have the same kinds of debates audiophiles have. Why? 
because after you're done measuring and comparing, you still have to deal with your emotional response to the gear and the music. Sometimes the gear that might perform with mediocrity or measure badly or is lossy is the stuff that connects with you, logic be damned. The Zeus does not set new standards. What it does, others have done in different ways. Instead, the Zeus simply provides its own spin on the music experience. This coloration to the sound is unlikely to flatter every genre. Those who want neutral or slightly more energetic treble are not going to be happy with this headphone. Those who want bassy performance will find the Zeus lacking. Those who want an intimate presentation will probably not find pleasure here. So I'm not convinced the Zeus is a jack of all trades or a perfect headphone for everyone. I am not suggesting you buy the Zeus. I don't think that $350 is a clear value proposition for this headphone. Maybe $200 or $250. But the current price is a bit steep for what you get. If the Zeus were $200 or $250, then it would directly compete with the HD6XX, which I think is likely the closest competition in regards to general sound signature. But at $350, it is hard to ignore cheaper alternatives and the mystery that is harmonic dyne. I think the Zeus is yet another chi fi headphone that is a bit overpriced and overhyped. It's a good product on its own. Heck, I bought one in the middle of the review process. But it's not something people need to rush out and buy. I would suggest you try to ignore the hype and ask yourself what sound signature you would prefer. You might end up realizing that the Zeus is not your cup of tea, or that its smooth vocals and treble are exactly what you want. But that's a personal preference that should not be driven by hype. Just because some people like the Zeus is not evidence that everyone will.